Plants, uh, of course, are going to be a major component in the future of, of this planet, of humanity on the planet, uh, in two uh, very large areas. Uh, one, of course, is in food production. As the human population increases, food becomes more and more important. But also in biofuels, uh, which are, 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 have great potential uh, for reducing uh, carb atmospheric carbon and reducing reliance on, on fossil fuels. In both cases, uh, the ability to clone plants uh, is very important. Most of the major energy crops uh, that are currently used, for example, sugarcane, uh, even oil palm, uh, and, uh, and, and some, uh, some grasses that are like miscanthus and switchgrass that are being proposed as, as non-food biofuel uh, crops, are all propagated as clones. And so the epigenetic changes that they undergo need to be understood. One of the big problems with biofuels that has, economic problems with biofuels that has come to light in the last few years is that, of course, if we use food crops for biofuels, this pushes up the price of, of, of food. Uh, and so uh, uh, there's been a great interest in the last few years to find alternatives to food crops that don't grow on arable land uh, and instead uh, can be used specifically for biofuels. We've become very interested in aquatic plants as a, as a possibility uh, here. And one of the most impressive aquatic plants from a biofuel point of view is common duckweed. The reason for this is that duckweed doubles in biomass every 48 hours, sometimes even less. And as a result, it has the highest uh, per hectare uh, increase in biomass of any plant. Even though it's a very small plant, uh, they're, they're, quite, they're amazing organisms. As anyone who, uh, who has a, a, a pond uh, will know, especially if that pond is, for example, on a golf course or something like that where there's a lot of uh, fertilizer put into the ground, the fertilizer will run off into the, into the pond. And duckweed is actually a very efficient uh, user of, of waste water, if you like. It can convert high nitrogen and high phosphorus uh, water uh, into much cleaner water and at the same time massively increase in biomass. So we're interested in using or, 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 or optimizing duckweed for use as a, as a biomass biofuel uh, based on its ability to grow on wastewater and, and water in places which you'd never imagine crops would grow. There are various ways to do this. Uh, we're, taking, uh, we're taking a lesson from the, uh, another very popular biofuel, which is algae, green algae. So green algae uh, have the ability, again, to grow uh, in, in, in water and, and at very uh, high rates, uh, but they also have the ability to make oil directly. Uh, and this has been very exciting in the, in the biofuels community. However, it still energetically is not efficient to make oil from algae. You put more energy in, uh, mostly from artificial light and, and, uh, and keeping things sterile and, and, and so on, uh, than you get out in the form of oil. Now, duckweed is a much more robust organism. It's a, it's a real plant, and so it can grow outdoors. It doesn't have big pathogen problems, uh, and it can grow very, very fast. So if we can persuade duckweed to make oil instead of starch, uh, we would be a long way on, on, on the path to making a, a really efficient biofuel.